Hello graduates, it's US Senator Dan Sullivan and congratulations on your graduation. I really wish I could be with all of you in our great state to celebrate with you. But as you probably know, there's a lot going on in Washington DC right now to get us through this unprecedented pandemic that has hit our nation, our state, and really the entire world. So I'm filming this graduation message from a place that's very, very inspiring to so many Alaskans, so many Americans. It's the rotunda of the United States Capitol. So again, I wanna say a big congratulations to all of you. You should celebrate, even if you have to social distance to do so. But I recognize, we all recognize, it's a tough time to celebrate such a momentous milestone. Now it's normal for graduates to feel joy, of course, but also a little anxiety and uncertainty at graduation. Well, the graduations this year, that anxiety and uncertainty is gonna be uh, significantly greater. There's no doubt about that because of this unprecedented pandemic that has hit our state and our country. But I have all the confidence in the world that with your leadership, we're gonna get through this crisis stronger and more resilient than ever. In previous graduation speeches, I've talked about how rewarding a life of service can be. Service to your communities, to your neighbors, to your elders, and service to your nation. But now that message is more important than ever. Not so much because service to others will be fulfilling to all of you. It will be. But now more than ever, we are gonna need your service to your community, to your nation, to your state, to your neighbors, to get us through these challenging times, to get us through this unprecedented pandemic, which we're all experiencing. We're gonna need all of you to help, as a matter of fact, to lead. Certain generations in American history have been faced with momentous challenges. The Revolutionary War, the Civil War, the Great Depression, World War II, the Civil Rights Era. These generations have always risen to the challenge and made our country stronger. I have no doubt you will too. Already we're seeing many changes taking place in our country and many changes are taking place for the better. Our new national heroes are those on the front lines that are battling this pandemic, whether it's our healthcare workers, our truck drivers, those working in our grocery stores and pharmacies, our clergy, our first responders, entrepreneurs and business, small business leaders, and scientists who are working on vaccines to get us through these challenging times. The value and dignity of hard work is front and center again in America. The generosity of our citizens in Alaska and across our nation is on full display. The value of close communities and connections are being appreciated like never before, even if you have to do it through Zoom. So graduates, you are entering adulthood right at the time that our nation faces one of its biggest challenges in the history of America. And we're gonna need you to get us through these challenges and you will do it. I know, I know you will do it. I am confident that every one of you will answer the call in a way that fits you and your personality and your interests the best. But in the meantime, congratulations, celebrate, enjoy this time. We are very proud of all your accomplishments and all that you have already done in your wonderful lives. So congratulations again. And by the way, congratulations to our great teachers, parents, grandparents, family members who have gotten you to this very important milestone in your life. How about a round of applause for all of them? I look forward to seeing you all back in our great state. We're very, very proud of you. Looking forward to all you're gonna do in the future. Good evening.
My name is Matthew Swalling, and I am the assistant principal of Joe Reddington Senior, Junior Senior High School. It is my great honor to welcome the class of 2020 graduates, families, and friends to our commencement ceremony tonight. Graduates, many of you began your journey at Reddington five years ago as eighth grade students. Brand new students in a brand new school, new teachers, new friends, new beginnings. I had the privilege of teaching many of you in my music classes, and I cherish those memories. It was a great, exciting time filled with new challenges and endless potential. Not every obstacle was easy. You helped create a school culture from scratch. You embraced new styles of learning. You finally notched that first win for your sports team after many hard battles. You survived the earthquake and you endured a pandemic that robbed you of the sweet spring of your senior year. You did it all with your head held high and your heart on your sleeve. Today, you can proudly say, I made it. I know without a doubt that you are going to take on each and every challenge in this life with the same resolve. You will go far and I look forward to watching the impact you will make in our community and the greater world. Your families are proud of you. Your teachers are proud of you. Your friends are proud of you. And Huskies, I am proud of you. At this time, I ask you to please rise for the singing of our national anthem. The anthem is being performed tonight by Mr. Todd Whitehurst. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Reddington High School's principal, Tom Lytle. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tom Lytle, and I have the privilege of serving as the principal here at Reddington High School. I would like to welcome all of the parents and grandparents, brothers and sisters of seniors, extended family members, loved ones, mentors, and most importantly, the Joe Reddington Senior, Junior Senior High School Class of 2020 graduates. I must admit, Standing before you in the manner in which I find myself this evening is not what I expected when we started our year together back in August. At our back to school barbecue, I envisioned myself extending my hand to each of you and you accepting your diploma with pride and excitement and perhaps even a tear or two in your eyes. I saw myself hugging my own senior daughter, Marion, as I handed her the diploma and heard myself whispering words of pride into her ear as she rocked across the stage. Instead, we find ourselves making eye contact through cyberspace, perhaps while staring at your smart TV, cell phone, computer screen, or even your video gaming system. This, simply put, is not what we expected. As I've been pondering this for the last few weeks, and to be honest with you, thinking about how unexpected and unfair this is for each of you, I found myself battling some vicarious disappointment and even anger about the situation in which we all find ourselves tonight. As my emotions oscillated between sadness, disappointment, and frustration, I stumbled onto this quote from author, songwriter, and speaker, Stephen Fiertig. Your perspective will either become your prison or your passport. I was struck with the realization that my feelings were not unjustified. However, I was, in fact, being imprisoned by my negative emotions and thoughts. At that moment, I understood that I needed to change my perspective. 
Now, those of you who know me well enough know that I might have some, let's just say, distracted thinking patterns. So upon discovery of the aforementioned quote, my thoughts began to spiral. And after much mental wandering, they circled back to the idea of the unexpected. Much of life is unexpected. But I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know, graduates, especially considering the unexpected circumstances this virus has brought on all of us. Furthermore, many of us have already dealt with other unexpected life events, unexpectedly good and unexpectedly bad. And this will continue for the rest of our lives. What makes the difference in how we overcome and persevere, even succeed, is our perspective. We often find that we experience frustration, anger, and disappointment when coping with life's unexpected challenges. Sometimes these emotions become crippling. This, however, does not have to be the case. What often serves as the determining factor in one's success in life, in fact, is perspective. A negative or fatalistic perspective can have debilitating ramifications. On the other hand, a positive and resilient perspective can overcome even the worst circumstances. Your perspective is what can help you to see a silver lining in a tough situation. Your perspective is what might give you the stamina to see a goal through to fruition. It is your perspective that will provide the determination and commitment to repair a relationship that may just last you a lifetime. These points are driven home for me when I consider the life of Viktor Frankl. Viktor was an Austrian neurologist and psychiatrist who authored the book, Man's Search for Meaning, which he wrote after surviving four concentration camps during World War II. Frankl, after enduring some of the worst that the Holocaust could offer, wrote that, when we are no longer able to change our situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. He then went on to say, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. In short, Frankel, when forced to overcome the worst of life's circumstances, which he most notably did, indicates that it is one's ability to choose the correct perspective that will be the deciding factor in one's success, and even survival. Graduates, I find this realization not disheartening or weighty. Rather, I find it to be inspirational and freeing. Tonight, you are on a fulcrum, a tipping point of sorts. Tonight, we celebrate all the hard work, effort, and strength that has caused you to arrive at this point. Tonight, you can choose to mourn the loss of a traditional graduation, or you can choose to celebrate everything and everyone who inspired you to reach this momentous event. Tonight, you can choose to welcome the unknown of the future without fear, because you know how to choose a perspective that will guarantee your success. You're doing it right now in these unprecedented times. And as you move forward from this moment, you can use what you now know to embrace every unexpected circumstance that life may throw at you, being convinced that you can overcome because you have chosen a perspective that will make you unstoppable. Joe Reddington, class of 2020, you are unstoppable. You are resilient and you are to be applauded on having arrived at this moment tonight. It is with all of this in mind that I offer you my most heartfelt congratulations. As we continue to celebrate you this evening, please join me in welcoming both our senior class president and class of 2020 valedictorian, Miss Jessica Morgan Flash. Wow, I can't believe this time has finally arrived. We are now graduating. This is an unprecedented time right now in all of our lives, causing many new challenges for all of us. Social distancing, hunkering down, online classes, no sports, and now, online graduation. This is something that has not been done before, and we, the class of 2020, are now having memories and experiences no one before us has had. 
We have had many people creating long-lasting memories through our school years. And with this, I would like to thank all the teachers, coaches, staff, our esteemed principal, Mr. Lytle, vice principal, Mr. Swalling, and of course, our parents. Your efforts to keep us on track and out of trouble have been above and beyond, highly appreciated, and will never be forgotten. Everyone has faced many big struggles, whether it be in our studies, families, or even just needing someone to talk to. The people in our schools and families provided us with the help that we needed to get us to where we are now. Not only did we make it here, but we made it here as best as we could and should all be very proud of the past we have trekked to get here. Each and every one of us had a goal or a dream we wanted to or still want to accomplish. And the ending of our high school year is the opening to a new future. You might not know where you want to go now or the path you want to take, but as Eleanor Roosevelt once said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. As for me, I don't know where I'll be in a year from now or five years from now. Heck, if I'm being completely honest, I don't even know what I'll be having for dinner tomorrow. But I do know that as long as I'm pursuing the path that I want to take and follow my dreams, everything will fall into place. Dare to dream as big as you can. Life is full of ups and downs comprised of many different paths. As you dream, dare to find purpose in life you choose. Don't live as if the purpose of life is to arrive safely at death. Set life-size goals. If you want to be a millionaire or the president, go for it. Even if you want to do something simple, you just have to pursue heart-wanted passions and go after your dreams. A dream is destined to fail without divine intervention. And in all reality, you just have to keep asking questions while you continue making mistakes. We are all human and it is inevitable that we will take a wrong turn or two as we pursue our goals. Make those dreams your very own. Don't let other people persuade you to be something that you are not. Instead of taking the same path as everyone else, forge a new path, follow a new dream, and make a new mistake that no one else has made. In doing so, you will grow to be your own person, capable of leaving a legacy that helps others along in their life's journey. So, as we are about to step out on our own, we need to remember a few guiding principles. Keep seeking joy. Stop pointing out problems and become the solution. Stop repeating the past and start creating the future. Stop playing it safe and start taking risks. Expand your horizons, accumulate experiences, and enjoy the journey. Find every excuse you can to celebrate everything you can. Live like today is the first and last day of your life. Don't let what's wrong with you keep you from worshiping what's right. As Steve Jobs says, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your inner voice. Burn sinful bridges, blaze new trails, and don't let fear dictate your decisions. Take a flying leap of faith, don't hold out, quit holding back, and be the best version of yourself that you can be so your life is not filled with regrets. So often we look back and think, I should have done that, or I could have done that differently. Why wait for opportunities to come to you? We can make our own opportunities right now without waiting for tomorrow or next week or next year. This evening is the end of all the baby steps we took towards growing up. This evening is also the beginning of being grown up. Therefore, tonight, Begin living as if you are the person that the childhood version of yourself always wanted to be. Don't wait. And finally, Mother Teresa said, yesterday is gone, tomorrow has not yet come, we have only today, let us begin. Now, with great honor, I would like to welcome Catherine Pesqua. She is here to formally introduce our class of 2020 UA Scholars. The UA Scholars is a high honor for those few selected students to receive, and they should be very proud of all they have accomplished to get the award. Now let's all give a warm welcome to Catherine Pesqua. Hello students and families. First and foremost, I want to salute each graduate for all your amazing academic accomplishments, your resilience, and your grit. 
Each of you is a champion ready to advance to reach your next goals. My name is Catherine Pasqua. I'm the UA Scholar Admissions Counselor with the University of Alaska Anchorage. With the goal to invest in Alaska's future, in 1999, the University of Alaska began offering the UA Scholars Award. It was established to function as an ambassador program, bringing academically talented students together from all regions of Alaska to study, live, and work together. The UA Scholars Award is a $12,000 scholarship awarded to Alaska students in the top 10% of their high school graduating class. Graduates, you are among the 932 UA scholars this year in Alaska. On behalf of the University of Alaska Anchorage and the University of Alaska UA Scholars Program, I would like to recognize three of Reddington's graduates. Kaylina Ford, Jessica Morgan Flash, and Kristen Shirley. Each of these UA Scholar earns $12,000 to be used in four academic years in one of UA's campuses, totaling to $36,000 for Reddington's cl graduating class of 2020. Congratulations, graduates, and congratulations also to those who have supported and continue to support your success throughout your education journey. As we all know, our school's name is dedicated to a famous Alaskan musher. Well, in keeping with that theme, it is very much my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, another well-known, accomplished musher, Dee Dee John Rowe. Dee Dee started off by making her own sled and selecting and building successful teams of sled dogs. This woman has poured her heart and soul into a sport and a way of life that long ago was saving other people's lives. With all the hard work she has put into achieving her life's aspirations, she has been runner up in the Iditarod three times, set the fastest woman's record along with having numerous awards for the care of her dogs. Dee Dee has held the most inspirational award as well. She has struggled just like everyone else, but she didn't let that get her down. The manner in which she pursued her dreams with all her heart highlights, Dee Dee's perseverance. Now, let's welcome Dee Dee John Rowe. This is an exciting time of year, even though there's strange circumstances around it. You're unique. You guys have lived and survived through and actually been able to learn and thrive through both the earthquake, which was no light deal at 7.2, the COVID epidemic or pandemic that we are currently um, going through, and then there's the personal challenges that have been in your life, whether they've been um, a problem with the time that you've had to study, or perhaps it was living conditions, perhaps it was emotional conditions. All of those things are behind you now. They're all things that you have survived and overcome. Now, circumstances will continue to throw you a curveball. You are the adults that will decide what you're going to do with it. So I just wanted to encourage you. I know that you are extraordinarily driven or you would never have gotten to this point in your life. When I was in high school and I graduated from high school, I thought I knew where I was going, why I was going there and what I wanted to do. And the first thing challenged wise that I was set with was, no, you're not going to do any of those things you already had in mind. My father brought me from high school graduation to Alaska within three weeks. And I was given a choice of any college in Alaska I wanted to go to. I could go to college, but it had to be in Alaska. And being the fact that I was coming from Virginia and had never lived any place cold, that was a challenge. But I got to tell you, when I decided almost out of um, stubbornness to choose the University of Alaska Fairbanks, it opened so many doors to me, it opened so many adventures, that that's who you see here today, who you see with the accomplishments that you might 
credit me with, and perhaps failures as well. They're all based on judgments and decisions that I made as the first time I walked into the community with my own adult choices. Didn't follow exactly where my parents thought I wanted to go. Didn't follow at all where I thought I was going to go. But did follow a God-given best past for myself. God helps us be the best we were born to be. And I was born to be uh, addicted to dogs and adventure. And although my degree is in biological sciences from the University of Alaska Fairbanks, which first excited me into the concept of being out of doors, I was more than uh, ready to take that challenge on. Anytime somebody threw a roadblock in my way, I tried to figure out how I was going to overcome it, even though I perhaps was not best suited for it. I was never considered a top athlete. I was never considered to be the top most adventuresome girl that was going to graduate from my class. But in my mind, I had uh, many more ambitions for myself. I wanted to excel at something. My parents had been really good about exposing me to many things, but nothing longevity enough that I was uh, on the uh, on the path to being extraordinarily successful and I had to evaluate where that was going to go. That was a judgment call and that was a deep-seated decision that I was required to make and that actually you guys are on the cusp of making. You're the third class to graduate from Reddington High. I, I'm a little bit prejudiced, I gotta say. Just the concept that the school was named after uh, the Reddington family that have brought a lot to the culture of Alaska is particularly um, tender to my heart. But I know you guys in particular are unique. There's no one like you. No one has whatever passion you have. No one has the challenges that you have faced personally. Everybody's journey is unique and individual. And I've got to say, I'm impressed. I'm impressed that we're doing graduation virtually when we can't do it in a, the traditional way. Already, you guys are breaking the mold. You're already stepping out of the uh, known into the unknown before you ever even realize you were going to go there. I mean, I uh, really would like to encourage you. I'd like to say there hadn't been anyone that had ever made long distance dog mushing um, occupation prior to the dreams that Martin and myself and some of the other uh, early drivers had in mind. And yet it did become a vocation because it was a passion. So whatever you consider, if you really just deep six yourself, go and think about it. What is your passion? And that passion is truthfully what you'll be most successful at. I'm finding myself now as always thought um, whimsical things were interesting. That's the kind of art I liked. And I've just uh, embarked on a new opportunity to at least take my feelings out of my head and paint them on some paper. Who would think that someone that has never shown any artistic talent in anyone in the family except for perhaps my niece who I think is very artistic would um, be thinking about being an, uh, an art an artist with the visions in their mind anything you're passionate about anything that's positive anything that's outside of yourself and into the community and focuses on bettering the lives of the people around you are all things that are worthwhile pursuing, whether they're in higher education, vocation, or just community involvement. All those things are valuable, and you're the one individually that's going to make the decision where your path will lead. I'm uh, thankful for this opportunity, thankful for you guys is having stuck it out. This hasn't been an easy year to be a senior, but I got to tell you, it's an exciting year to be a senior because you're forging a path that's never been traveled before. So for me, good luck. It's going to be our great ride. Just hang.
Reddington Class of 2020, the staff has put together the following montage to wish you well and great success. Congratulations, everyone. A great big, oh yeah, I made it for you all. I'm so sorry it did not end in the normal way. But then again, there's a life lesson for you. I want you all to know that I am so proud of you and wish you all the best for your future. May the Lord continue to bless you. Yours truly, Coach Campbell. Hello, Reddington 2020 seniors. This is Mrs. Ryan, and I wanted to tell you how very proud I am of each and every one of you. I've had the honor and privilege of watching you grow and achieve your goals throughout the years. Some of you I've had awesome experiences with in athletics and activities, and I wish you the very best wherever life takes you after graduation. Bye. Congratulations, class of 2020. Good luck with your future success, but luck should have nothing to do with it. Congratulations to all of you. I hope you never stop learning, exploring, growing, and challenging yourselves to be the best you. We are all so proud of you. Congratulations, class of 2020. I'm so proud of you, and I just want you to know that, like no other class in history, you have perfect 2020 vision for the future in front of you. You can do this. But before you get started, just remember to relax and have some Z's. Hi seniors, Mrs. Bowers feels like a T-Rex with short arms right now. <laughs> Congratulations on everything you've accomplished so far. I miss having many of you in the classroom. I hope your senior year has gone wonderfully and I can't wait to see you graduate. Congratulations, bye. Hey class of 2020, this is Mr. Scott. I just wanna say congratulations and good luck in the future. Hello, Reddington graduates. I miss you guys. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. Um, sad I can't see you all right now, but hopefully I'll get to see you again in the future. And I look forward to hearing about all of the amazing things that I know you're going to accomplish. Hey, class of 2020, it's Coach Solomon. Just want to congratulate you guys on making it through your senior year and wish you guys best of luck in the future. Hey, Huskies, class of 2020, congratulations. It's a big, wide world out there. Go do all the good things. On behalf of the Lady Huskies basketball program, I would like to say congratulations to the class of 2020. We wish you the best of luck in the future and remember that you will always be a Husky. Hello, graduating class of 2020. You have overcome many challenges to get where you are today. As your school nurse, I want to say that I am so proud of you for this great accomplishment. You are bound to do great things to impact our world. Congratulations. What's up class of 2020? I really miss you guys and I miss the fact that I can't be there today to celebrate with you. Anyways, be good people. I love you. Peace. Hey class of 2020, congratulations. Job well done. I really appreciate you all and I just enjoyed being uh, working here with you and I just wish you the best of luck for the rest of your life. Keep your head high and congratulations again. Class of 2020, this is Mrs. Campbell. Mrs. Rogers. And Ms. Gardner. It's been so much fun working with you all over the last four years and watching you grow into young adults. We want to wish you luck in all of your future adventures. We're going to miss you all so much. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, class of 2020, it's Coach Brooke. I want to wish you congratulations, good luck, and uh, get out there and get her done. Adios. Congratulations, class of 2020. When I graduated in 1993, we didn't have the internet. There were no smartphones. Google was only a really big number and Amazon was still just a river in South America. A lot changes in 27 years. And it goes by fast as you will soon find out. So here's some advice. Find your positive purpose. Always be humble and kind. Remember, how you treat other people says more about you than it does other people. And of course, responsibility is the price of greatness. Now, go forth and be the responsible, productive, contributing citizens that the world needs. Hey, class of 2020, just wanted you to know that we are super proud of you. Congratulations. 
Go on, do great things, and we're looking forward to hearing all about it. Take care. Love, Mr. Swalley. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know, and you are the one who will decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not so good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's open or there in the wide open air. Out there things can happen and frequently do and people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew, just go right along, you'll start happening too. Oh, the places you'll go. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed and you'll pass the whole gang and soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest, except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a prickly perch and your game will fly on. You'll be left in the lurch. You'll come down for the lurch with an unpleasant bump and the chances are then that you'll be in a slump. And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun. Unslumping yourself is not easily done. You'll come to a place where the streets are not marked. Some windows are lighted, but mostly they're dark. A place you could strain both your elbows and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right? Or right and three quarters? Or maybe not quite? Or go around back and sneak in from behind? Simple, it's not, I'm afraid you will find for a mind maker upper to make up his mind. You can get so confused that you'll start into race down long wiggled roads at a breakneck pace and grind on for miles across weirdish wild space headed, I fear, toward a most useless place, the waiting place. For people just waiting, waiting for a train to go or a bus to come or a plane to go or the mail to come or the rain to go or the phone to ring or the snow to snow or waiting around for a yes or a no are waiting for their hair to grow. Everyone is just waiting. Waiting for the fish to bite or waiting for the wind to fly a kite or waiting around for Friday night or waiting perhaps for their uncle Jack or a pot to boil or a better break or a string of pearls or a pair of pants or a wig with curls or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. With banner flip flapping, once more you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky. Ready because you're that girl or that guy. Oh, the places you'll go, there is fun to be done. There are points to be scored, there are games to be won. And the magical things you can do with that ball will make you the winningest winner of all. Fame, you'll be famous as famous can be with the whole wide world watching you win on TV. Except when they don't, because sometimes they won't. I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. You'll play games you can't win because you'll play against you all alone. Whether you like it or not, alone will be something you'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. But on you will go, though the weather be foul. On you will go, though your enemies prowl. On you will go, though the hack and cracks howl. Onward up many a frightening creek, though your arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. 
On and on you will hike and you'll know you'll hike far and face up to your problems, whatever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with great care and great tact. And remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft and never mix up your right foot from your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarter percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. So be your name Brianna or Brooke or Bryce or Mackenzie, Abby, Vara, Alex, Okit Khan. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your way. Thank you, Jessica, Catherine, and Dee, for your words of inspiration. Now, even though you may be in a variety of locations, will the senior class please rise? School board member Ryan Ponder, ladies and gentlemen, and class of 2020. As principal of Joe Reddington Senior, Junior Senior High School, I hereby verify that these students have met or exceeded the requirements as set forth by the Matanuska Susitna Borough School District and Joe Reddington Senior, Junior Senior High School, and are thus eligible to receive the documents we will present to them this evening. Mr. Swalling, if you could begin the roll call, please. I have the distinct privilege of reading tonight's graduate roll call. As we celebrate our graduates, we would like to take this opportunity to recognize students who made academic excellence a priority in their life. In doing so, they have earned the titles of valedictorian and salutatorian. These three students will lead our roll call this evening to honor the hard work and dedication that led them to the top of their class. Let the roll call begin. Jessica Morgan Flash, valedictorian. Jessica would like to thank her family, the staff at Reddington, and especially Mr. Lytle for their support. In the future, she plans to attend the University of Alaska Anchorage. Kaylina Ford, salutatorian. Kaylina would like to thank her family for pushing her to be the best person she could be, her friends for making her laugh, Mrs. Bannon and Mr. Robeson for always being there. In the future, Kaylina plans to join the United States Army to become a paramedic. Kristen Shirley, salutatorian. She would like to thank her parents and her teachers for shaping her into the person she is today. She is forever grateful. In the future, she plans to always try her best, stay positive, and keep smiling. Marion Eperezuk. She would like to say thank you to everyone who supported her, especially her family. In the future, she plans to attend college and study to become a social worker. Annalise Bain. She would like to thank her parents, Ivy Anderson, the boys, her teammates, and Mr. and Mrs. Cans. In the future, she will attend Montana State University to study pre-med. Dylan Beiswinger. Dylan would like to thank his parents and his teachers for all of their support. In the future, Dylan plans to continue working and saving money to attend the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Isaac Bennett would like to thank his mom, his dad, and Mr. Lytle for all of their support. In the future, Isaac plans to enter the workforce in construction. Emily Bodek. Emily would like to thank all of her friends for making her laugh and smile and her teachers who are always willing to help. In the future, Emily plans to attend the University of Alaska Anchorage to become a neurologist. 
Brianna Buchanan. She would like to thank her mom and dad for their support, her teachers and coaches for guiding her, and the sidewalks for keeping her off the streets. In the future, she plans to attend Alaska Career College to study massage therapy. Austin Campbell would like to thank his parents for encouraging him and Mr. Cans and Mr. Parker for always being there. In the future, Austin would like to go to college for game design and graphics. Michael Cassidy would like to thank his mom and everyone else who has helped him along the way. In the future, Michael plans to enter the workforce in the construction field. Chai Chow would like to thank his friends for helping him through the journey, his teachers for giving him, him wisdom, and his parents for providing him with love and life. In the future, Chai dreams to live a simple and happy life and to try and share that positive energy with others that he meets. Joseph Church would like to thank his parents and Mr. Mackey for all of their support. In the future, he plans to attend the University of Alaska Matsu College. Bryce Daniels would like to thank Mr. Parker, Mr. Cans, Mrs. Doss, and Mr. Lytle for their support. In the future, Bryce plans to attend Alaska Vocational Technical Center for welding. Orion Daniels. He would like to thank Mr. Parker, Mr. Cans, Mrs. Doss, and Mr. Lytle for their support. In the future, Orion plans to attend the Alaska Vocational Technical Center for welding. Justin Dick would like to thank his parents, his teachers, his counselors, and his coaches for all of their support. In the future, Justin would like to become a pilot. Abigail Fuller would like to thank her family for all of their support. In the future, she is looking at several options, including universities and the military. Junior Jesus Garcia would like to thank all his family and friends, the staff and coaches, Mrs. Cicada, and most importantly, the people that doubted him. In the future, he plans to enter the workforce in the oil field industry. Patrick George would like to thank his family, friends, and his co-conspirators. In the future, Patrick plans to enter the workforce. Brooke Harmon would like to thank her parents for always making sure her work was done and just being there through the ups and downs and her teachers and coaches for checking on her and making sure she was successful in school, caring for her and pushing her to do her best. In the future, Brooke plans to take a gap year and then go to college to play volleyball and study cosmetology. Mackenzie Hobbs would like to thank her family, friends, and especially Mrs. Lara, Mrs. Vicky, and Mr. Lytle. In the future, Mackenzie plans to stay in Alaska and work, then move to Utah in January to attend Utah State to study nursing. Tyler Holsapple would like to thank his mom and his brother for all of their support, as well as Mr. Cans and Mrs. Nikki. In the future, Tyler plans to become a firefighter. Cynthia Horn would like to thank her family and friends for supporting her. She would also like to give a special shout out to her best friend, Mary. In the future, Cynthia plans to be happy and successful. Riley Jacko would like to thank his parents and his teachers for all of their support. In the future, he plans to attend Alaska Vocational Technical Center to become an industrial electrician. Jack Jenkins would like to thank his parents, grandparents, and Mr. Wolcott for all of their support. In the future, Jack plans to enter the workforce through a carpentry apprenticeship. Sebastian Jernigan would like to thank his mom for all of her support. In the future, he plans to enlist in the United States Marine Corps. Daniel Kane would like to thank his mom, his dad, his friends, Mr. Lytle, Mr. T, and Alaska Crossings for all of their support. In the future, Daniel plans to attend Alaska Vocational Technical Center for HVAC. Anna Katsuba 
would like to thank her parents, her teachers, her counselors, her uncle, and most of all, God. In the future, Anna plans to become an entrepreneur. Gabriel Kraskoff would like to thank his mom and dad for all of their support. In the future, he plans to enter the workforce in construction. Preston Kulhanek would like to thank his mom and stepdad, Mr. Cans and Mr. Parker for all of their support. In the future, he plans to attend Universal Technical Institute for Diesel in the Auto Technical Program. Bavara Kuzman would like to thank her parents, teachers, and coaches for all of their support. In the future, she plans to enter the workforce and save money to attend the University of Alaska Anchorage. Blaine Lee would like to thank his parents and Kim for all of their support. In the future, Blaine plans to enter the workforce at Red Dog Mine. Clayton McCormick, he would like to thank his mom and dad, Kelsey and Nadia, and Mrs. Doss for putting him in his place and teaching him real life skills. In the future, Clayton plans to attend the University of Alaska Anchorage to study nursing. Gavin Metcalf would like to thank his family, friends, and coaches for all their support. In the future, he plans on attending college to study science and business. Ethan Namchek would like to thank his mom, his teachers, and the great people that go to this school. In the future, he plans to pursue a career in animation. Jan Nashukbuk would like to thank his family, Mrs. Doss, Coach Weinberger, Coach Shirak, Mr. Lytle, and Mr. Swalling for their support. In the future, he plans to enter the workforce and is also considering joining the military. Caitlin Newman would like to thank her family and her friends and Riley for all of their support. In the future, she plans to take a gap year and then pursue a college degree in interior design. Crystal Norton would like to thank her Oma for her support. In the future, Crystal plans to enter the workforce and move to the lower 48. Kaylee Okaton would like to thank Mr. Cans, herself, Kayla Anderson, and Brian Triplett for their support. In the future, she plans to attend college to study aviation. Alexandra Pollock would like to thank her dad, her stepmom, and her aunt Carrie for their support. She's considering joining the United States Air Force. Samuel Pike would like to thank his parents, Mrs. Scott, and all the friends in the class of 2020. In the future, Sam plans to follow his dream of playing hockey. Antonio Rogers would like to thank his family for all of their support. In the future, Antonio plans to attend college. Walker Ryan would like to thank his family, friends, and coaches for always supporting him. In the future, Walker plans to attend the University Technical Institute for the Automotive and Diesel Program. Logan Van Dort would like to thank his family for all of their support and in the future, Logan plans to enter the workforce as an electrician. Catherine Wilkerson would like to thank her sister Alex, her brother Abram, Mrs. Price, Mr. Cans, her counselors, the Nasbys and the Hendersons, Mr. Swalling and Jaden for all of their support. In the future, Catherine plans on attending a trade school for welding. Devin Williams would like to thank his family, friends, and teachers for all of their support. In the future, Devin plans to enter the workforce after he graduates. Haley Williams would like to thank her mom and dad as well as her stepmom and give a big thanks to Mrs. Bowers. In the future, Haley plans to enter the workforce and save money to attend Alaska Vocational Technical Center to study culinary arts. Thor Williamson would like to thank his family, friends, and teachers for all of their support. 
In the future, Thor plans to enter the workforce right after graduation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to present to you the class of 2020. Before we conclude with our final remarks for this evening, I would like to ask the class of 2020 to stand briefly with me. School Board Representative Ponder, will you please join me to accept this class? Mr. Lytle, as a school board member of the Matanuska Susitna Borough School District, I hereby proudly accept the Joe Reddington Senior, Junior Senior High School Class of 2020. Seniors, at this time, please move your tassels from the right to the left before taking your seats again. In my opening remarks, we discussed that perspective is what will largely determine your success in life. Unexpected circumstances will always come your way, as assuredly as rainstorms will always fall from the sky. I am reminded that Albert Einstein tells us that there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. When life's storms come your way, choose to see them as opportunities. See those unexpected situations and storms as miracles and allow your perspective to propel you to greatness. Here at Reddington High School, we have these words written on the top of our letterhead, calling out the greatness in each other every single day. Greatness is not a solitary act. Greatness is not necessarily financial success. What matters, graduates, is how you live your life on a daily basis and the lives you positively impact along your way. And that, graduates, will be determined by the perspective you choose on a daily basis. My very favorite quote, one that I shared at the ribbon cutting ceremony at the very opening of this school five years ago, in the very room you should have been seated in tonight, is the one I want to leave with you on this, your last official day as a student in our school. In the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, the purpose of life is not to be happy, it is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to have it make some difference that you have lived and lived well. Graduates, my final call to you and my final moments as your principal is this. Choose your attitude and perspective in life's unexpected circumstances. Remember your triumphs, failures, and the people who have supported you through those. Pay attention to the little choices you make on a daily basis. Choose to see the good in every situation and choose to make the best of every opportunity. In every little decision you make, decide to be useful, honorable, and compassionate. And above all else, live and live well. Ladies and gentlemen, it now gives me great pleasure to present to you the alumni of Joe Reddington Sr. Junior Senior High School, the class of 2020. <laughs>